Okay, CCL Sports Cards fans, welcome back. Another episode of sort of, I, I just invested is uh, as part of the episode, but we've also got sort of a, a bonus uh, PSA card reveal as cards keep coming back faster and faster. Say what you will about, uh, about PSA, but their turnaround times are, they're pretty accurate right now. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. And before we get to the reveal, um, I do want to ask if you haven't subscribed already, support the drive to five. I'm looking to get to 500 subscribers in six weeks. So if you haven't subscribed, you like the content, enjoy things, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the like icon. Let's help build this channel. But with that, let's get uh, let's get rolling here. So first up, we're going to start with the I Just Invested portion. Fans of the show, you know I like this guy. We got a true blue Jordan Groshans, true gem plus BGS 9.5 with a 10 on the auto. 81 of 150. Got this in a, a private deal with, um, you can follow them on Instagram, New England Pieces. They got some great cards, good guy to deal with, super fast shipping. Uh, do like the, I like the Blue Jays True Blue, such pretty cards. Um, and as I've said before in uh, other episodes, BGS cards are just a good value right now. And next up, we've got another True Blue. Shaylin Polanco of the Pirates. Uh, I am a Pirates fan, so there may be a bit of bias here. But I'm, I'm really digging, um, you know, 21 Chrome guys. Some of them, anyways, they're, they're just coming down in price as people have moved on to uh, newer, you know, bigger and newer prospects. So I'm really enjoying buying uh, 20 and 21 guys. It's a little bit cheaper. So we got another PSA 10, uh, True Blue 25 of 150. Shaylin didn't have a really good... Um, 21 season uh, he really didn't play very well I think his average was in the low 200s with in limited uh, limited time at rookie ball but um, he was one of the top signees internationally and um, yeah being only 18 years of age I think uh, we got some time that one cost me cost me $500 on eBay and next up we got Bobby Barrels a true black 35 of 75 PSA 10 Pick this up on eBay for twenty nine hundred dollars. Um, yeah, Bobby Barrels. I got an episode coming up where I'm going to talk about some of these guys, but his stuff just keeps getting less and less expensive. And um, I mean, he's still young, so I, I love him uh, cheaper. You know, twenty nine hundred dollars is a good chunk of change, but the fact that his cards are getting cheaper, uh, I like that, and I do enjoy the the blacks when they're the black cards when they're gem because you can pick up so many flaws. So it seems like a harder card to get a 10 on. But uh, yeah, expecting big things out of Bobby Barrels this year. Uh, such a cool name too. You don't earn that nickname because you can't hit. And this guy, sort of um, uh, obviously a true blue, uh, Tucupita Tuku Marcano, PSA 10. We've got 67 of 150. He is not a big prospect, um, but he's got a wicked signature. Uh, cool story about Tucupita is he actually played for the Padres in 44 games last year. He didn't play well, but he's already debuted and he's only 22. So I, I do like that we have some time. Another really cool thing about Tucupita Marcano, you'll see his stats there. It does, it's not shown, but at all levels, this guy walks as much as he strikes out. So he's got like a one-to-one. -one. And so, I mean, I think super patience in a young kid is, is really something to look at. And I picked up this uh, True Blue uh, PSA 10 for $250. I'm okay. It's a really, you know, it's a low risk thing. It's a very pretty card. Uh, true story, Tucupita Marcano is now in the pirate system. He came over in the Adam Frazier deal last year. So I like him even a little bit more now that he's a pirate. And another Tucupita Marcano card, PSA 10. This one is number 114 out of 150. Again, super cool signature. This one cost me two sixty, so around the same price point, but you know, not breaking the bank. And because he's so young and he has debuted, I, I like him to to grow a little bit. We got some time, and I don't mind inexpensive sort of cheap chases. And he's part of that um, uh, twenty chrome set that um, you know is a pretty pretty heavy duty set um, in terms of the prospects in there. Um, yeah, I like Tucupita Marcano a lot, but he is definitely an under the radar kind of guy. His stats will not blow you away. With that, let's get into the PSA card reveal. We're going to start with um, we got the first one here. We've got a PSA 10 Gabriel Moreno. 
Um, Moreno still hasn't debuted this year in terms of um, the minor leagues. Uh, just a slower start. He had some passport issues and visa problems, so he can't play yet. But he's going to start the year at AAA Buffalo. Looking forward to seeing him. And um, yeah, PSA 10. It's always nice to see when you get those grades back. And we've got another Gabby Moreno, another true gem PSA 10. Uh, luckily, um, they were a really cheap chase, and you guys know that I love Pristine Worldwide. The Jays were a super cheap chase uh, when he would do 20 chrome breaks, and uh, I picked up a lot of um, Moreno base. I didn't get any color, which was kind of a bummer, but it is super cool to see these uh, cards come back as gems, kind of made all the chasing worthwhile. And we've got another Gabby Moreno. I was stunned that uh, these that these cards all gemmed, not because they weren't in good condition. They actually were beautifully centered. You can see that. There wasn't a lot of uh, print lines or surface issues. Corners looked good, but I just felt that, you know, with five, you know, chances are a couple of them are going to get nines. But as you're seeing here, they all got tens. So I felt like a pretty lucky dog getting... Um, I'm not going to spoil it, but we're now four for five on the tens with the Gabby Moreno base. Four for five. And number five here, another PSA 10. So really feel like I lucked out and hit a home run. Again, I do clean my own cards. I'm very careful. Uh, there's some great videos online on how to clean and care for your cards. I don't use waxes. I don't do any of that stuff where you alter the cards. But there's some really great um, videos and how-to videos on how to clean your cards if you don't want to send them out. But uh, yeah, five for five on the Morenos. That was super sweet when I opened that email. I also love that PSA now sends you a high res scan of your cards so you can see them before they come home. We're getting into some more interesting stuff, a little more, some cards that you don't see very often. And we've got sort of a, kind of a flagship card from when I was a kid. Opeachy Premier was a big deal. Obviously, Yermir Jagger, you know, Hall of Fame hockey player. He's still actually playing, not in the NHL, or at least he was last year, last time I read, which is crazy. Um, but I actually believe this card was going to be a 10. The, the centering is so good. The corners look sharp. There wasn't any of those um, you know, black print dots or white spots. It looked like a clean card. I picked this card up in 1993 um, at a show in East York at the East York Community Center on Pape Avenues. Man, those, they don't host them anymore. They're on the second floor. But this card cost me like $5. And it may sound strange, but I was only like, you know, 13, 14 years old. It was kind of like the crown of my collection at that point. So a little bummed that I got a nine on that one, but super cool card all the same. And next up, one man I feel is headed to the hall. Yadier Molina, um, you know, just an incredible catcher, an incredible career. I pulled this in a box in 2004 um, and... It just literally sat in a sleeve and a top loader, as a lot of my cards do, for, for years. And I pulled it out last year. I'd forgotten I had it. You know, I'm sure that happens to a lot of collectors. You kind of forget what you've got. And uh, I was hoping this card would 10. The centering looked uh, looked pretty good. There was no surface issues. Um, I can't really figure out why it nined. Um, I sort of was expecting a 10 because, again, the centering looked good. You can see it on camera. The centering looks pretty good left to right and top to bottom. But, uh, yeah, just came back a 9 for whatever reason. But... Super cool card. I'm going to hang on to this. I do believe Yadier Molina is headed to the hall. Uh, he has just had an incredible career. And another super cool card. Who doesn't love a 1986 Donruss Jose Canseco when he's got a mustache? Um, this card, at one point when I was a kid, uh, 19, early 1990s, was worth $100 raw. Go look it up in an old Beckett. It was, this was the chase. I mean, him and Ken Griffey Jr.'s 89 upper deck, these were the chases. And uh, super cool card. It got a 9. I'm not too surprised by that. Uh, the centering is off a little bit left to right, but it, it's so hard with older cards to gem. I thought maybe I could get away with the centering being off just a little bit, but super cool card. I will take the 9 all day. Uh, I actually have a second one I'm not going to show on camera where it got an 8. Um... But uh, yeah, a little bummed that got a nine. We got, this is sort of a, an odd card, uh, Lemieux. This is the uh, Emerald Ice by Parkhurst. I bought so much of this wax at local card shops, Parkhurst, when it was released in 91 and 92. And I've had this card for years. I just wanted it slabbed. Uh, it wasn't all that expensive to get it slabbed. And um, it got an eight. It did have some whitening on the bottom left. I wasn't surprised. I thought maybe it would nine. But one of those cards I just wanted to have slabbed. And I'm super happy that I did it. 
uh, you know, obviously Mario Lemieux had a great career, but that's not an overly valuable card, just something that kind of makes me happy and smile. Reminds me of my childhood. And this card, Barry Bonds' tops traded. Getting a nine on this, I was actually quite happy, given that um, these, these cards are just, they're so prone to like chipping on the borders and the corners going white. So I was super happy with a nine. This has been in my collection forever. I bought this in the early 90s raw from uh, legends of the game in toronto which was a massive massive collectible store that i used to frequent when i was a kid it was kind of like a, the costco of cards their prices were a bit high but they had so much selection i bought this one raw for i think uh, ten dollars back then and finally got uh, got a chance to get it slabbed uh, getting a nine again super pleased not disappointed you're always hoping for a 10 didn't have too much in the way of white around the black border and the centering looked good but uh, i'll take a nine all day and lastly, we got David Ortiz, his Alt Fleer Ultra 1997. I actually bought this card raw off eBay in about 2002. No, no, sorry, that's a lie. 2006. I had just met my wife, and I bought this one with a gold medallion edition that was in terrible condition that wasn't disclosed, but, um, you know, it didn't cost me all that much, so I wasn't completely bummed out. I actually thought this card might eight. Had a, just a tiny bit of chipping in the bottom left and uh, a little bit white in the upper right-hand corner, but maybe I'm too hard on my cards in terms of scrutinizing them. But I think that works when you're getting, you know, tens with pretty good frequency. So I thought it might eight, but uh, David Ortiz, love Big Poppy, super pleased with the nine. I will keep this card. It would have been nice if it ten, but that was probably never going to happen. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty happy to have a David Ortiz uh, rookie card in, uh, in my collection. That's it for the uh, the reveal, gang. I'll have another episode out in a couple of weeks. I'm going to be talking about my four uh, four favorite prospects to uh, to watch this season uh, going in, now that we've got 2022 rolling. But uh, thank you all so much for watching. Have an awesome finished year weekend.